If you're like me, you find all kinds of things planted in your garden bed. You've got the word of the Lord over your life. But like this guy, you say, God, I do believe, but I'm fighting. I've got some unbelief too. We've thought that the answer to this challenge is to have bigger faith. Jesus actually canceled out that concept when he said faith just the size of a mustard seed could take Mount Shasta and put it in the Pacific Ocean. First of all, picture a garden. We have raised beds in our house. We didn't raise them from the dead. They're actually just <laughs> elevated. Organic soil, everything. <clears throat> and picture the plant you want to grow and next to the plant you didn't plant. And all these things are competing for air, for, uh, for uh, sun, for nutrients, for uh, water. And there's this competition that's going on. We have an automatic watering system and it waters the weeds too. I'm trying to figure out how you can get a watering system that only waters the plants. I mean, we've got an orchard and we've got trees growing, but we also have weeds growing because they found out there's water there. The point I'm trying to make is the water of God's presence waters all seeds. Whatever seed is planted will become manifest by the presence of the Lord because it will begin to manifest. Let me illustrate this because you need to catch this to understand how the Lord works here. When he exposes, for example, you're just driving along and you find this just, just a little bit of an angry attitude or, or just an arrogant attitude, whatever, just begins to creep up. The Lord in his mercy through his presence is exposing a seed that wants permission to be planted. You have a quick moment to deal with it repentantly, in, in repentance, so that it doesn't set down roots. Because once it sets down roots, certainly it can be removed, but it starts affecting personality. And so quick repentance is the, is the best. You're driving down, you see that attitude where, no, oh, they just think they know, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, that's arrogance, God forgive me. Quickly repent, then turn and bless that person. I'm trying to have shorter and shorter times between the exposure of something and the quick repentance. Don't go into guilt and shame because it gives you a false sense of spirituality. It creates a, it creates a sense of humility that mimics humility, but it's not humility. It doesn't give you access to what humility gives you access to. And so doing the guilt-shame thing, oh, I did it again. Don't go there because then you're making an agreement with the accuser that's trying to draw you into the sin in the first place. If he can't get me into this sin, then he wants me to become arrogant over the fact that I'm dealing with the sin. Uh, that's, that's too big of a hole to fall into, so forgive me, I'll pull out of that one. Let me illustrate this uh, concept that the presence of the Lord causes all seeds to water. Picture with me the Last Supper. This is the most intense and intimate moment like ever. They know, they can feel it in the air. Something's about to happen. Jesus knows he's about to go to the cross. He's got the 12 there. In this intense moment of divine presence, this intimate moment, we see John with his head on Jesus' chest. We have Peter announcing, I will never deny you. And we have Judas walking out of the room to betray him because all seeds are watered in the presence. They all become manifest in these moments. Wisdom is to recognize when the Lord is bringing something to the surface and in that moment, he's giving you a grace. Deal with it quickly. Deal with it thoroughly. If you're like me, you find all kinds of things planted in your garden bed. You've got the word of the Lord over your life, but like this guy, in all honesty, you say, God, I do believe. You are my confidence, but I'm fighting. I've got some unbelief too. See, we've thought that the answer to this challenge is to have bigger faith. Jesus actually canceled out that concept of 
faith size as being the answer when he said faith just the size of a mustard seed could take Mount Shasta and put it in the Pacific Ocean. That's not just a nice, warm, fuzzy illustration. It's not a motivational point. It's not a rah-rah on Jesus' behalf. It's a statement of fact. Something this small can move something that big if it's by itself. See, the problem is I got other plants in my garden. This particular story, the disciples were presented with a case to bring deliverance to a child. I'll never forget as long as I live, probably 20, probably 24, 23, 24 years ago, I was in a meeting and a mom brought a little child to me that was demonized like that child. Very similar, very violent, very, it was horrible. I did everything I knew to do. I have ministered in deliverance many, many times. And I, I, I pulled out all the weapons and nothing happened. And I'll never forget the mom looking at me with her tormented child saying, what do I do now? And giving some stupid answer that didn't please her or me. Because sometimes you don't drive out a problem with power. You only do it through authority. And learning how to minister in authority is different than ministering in power. Authority is needed to deal with authority. Authority is needed to deal with this kind of obstacle, this kind of a problem. The father couldn't do it, so he brought him to the disciples. Now I remind you, the disciples are the most skilled and trained people in the area of deliverance to ever live up until that point. Nobody had the experience they had. No one had the insights. Nobody had the history, the testimony. No one. Jesus could trust them enough to send them in groups of two to a city and clean out the place. All the demonized are freed and the people that are tormented and sick are healed and all this stuff went on. In fact, it was so impacting that in Luke chapter 10, Jesus adds 70 more to the group and sends them out. Picture this, he sends out 82 folks. They go out, they come back. They are so excited because demons were subject to them. And Jesus says, by the way, he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. So he's responding to their success, if we can. He's responding to the impact of their anointing, their gift, their ministry. He's, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Just don't make that your point of joy. Make your point of joy the fact that your name is written in my book. Your name is written in my book. Great story, great point, but here we are. We've got those with the greatest expertise couldn't bring healing, deliverance to this child. The dad was lucky enough to see Jesus coming and brought the child to Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus wasn't impressed by the demonic manifestation. Sometimes we take our identity in the size of our problem. Be careful how you describe your problem. Because sometimes we'd actually rather have sympathy from a friend than breakthrough from a person of faith. I'm not saying don't share. I'm just saying be careful where your heart is going because sometimes we feed on that stuff. So it brings him to Jesus. Jesus was unmoved by the demonic manifestation, brought deliverance to the child. The disciples saw it, and it says they took Jesus aside, and they asked him, how come we couldn't do it? Jesus gave them this profound advice. This kind only comes out with prayer and fasting, which I'll talk about in a minute. For me, the biggest lesson in this story is that when the disciples couldn't bring about a breakthrough, they didn't create a theology around what didn't happen. They didn't look for biblical reasons why it wasn't God's will to deliver that child. Instead, they took Jesus aside and they asked, why not? I pray the day comes for you and for me that instead of being shocked 
when the breakthrough happens. We're shocked when it doesn't. Shocked enough to take Jesus aside and ask him to please explain why it didn't work on this situ- in this occasion. Jesus said this kind only comes out with prayer and fasting. But he neither prayed nor fasted. We know Jesus fasted. The one time we know that he fasted was 40 days when it, at the beginning of his ministry. It's kind of at the initiation. But he didn't, I'm not saying it's wrong, but he just, he didn't fast for a problem. He fasted into a lifestyle. So Jesus said, this kind only comes out with prayer and fasting. Then neither prayed nor fasted and brought deliverance. What did Jesus identify as the problem in this story? Unbelief. Unbelief was the problem. What did the dad think the problem was? A demon. Yes? He wants the demon out of his son. What's the problem to the dad? The demon. What's the problem to Jesus? Unbelief. There are times where you face a situation that is bigger than your unbelief can handle. I'm, I'm going to dig a hole that I'll never crawl out of. I can feel it. Uh, there's a sucking sound into this, into this hole. There are times where the measure of faith as compared to all the questions that you keep pondering and keep questioning, keep meditating on, that you keep fueling with the energy of your own soul It's too big of a battle. When you actually have the faith of God himself that when it's by itself is more than enough to move the mountain. But because you've allowed it to be planted with other competing things, you're in a war he didn't create for you. Prayer and fasting does not drive out demons. The the devil doesn't get intimidated when I miss a meal. I think he finds it entertaining. It may be because I'm such a pitiful faster. I was fasting this week watching hunting shows where they cooked the food that they shot. I gravitate towards those kind. Leave me alone. Just be quiet. I don't think the devil is intimidated by my fasting. He's intimidated by my authority. And what happens in prayer and fasting is you discover who he is and you discover who you are. That's it. Let me rephrase it. Fasting for some of us at times has been more likely called a hunger strike. It's where you announce to God, you're not eating until something happens. (laughs) That's that's funny to me. That's funny. That that would ever cross our mind. That all right, you want me to fast? I'm fasting until this happens. It's not like fasting, it it doesn't earn brownie points. You know, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't, you know what it does? Fasting is where you are hungrier for something you can't see than what you can see. That's what it is. What does faith operate in? If it operates in the unseen. What does unbelief operate in? It operates in what you can see. It's the wallowing child foaming at the mouth. That's the challenge. The disciples, had they not been given a proper amount of authority to deal with that child? They had been. Jesus gave them all the authority needed to deal with any problem they faced. Did they deal with it? No. Why? Too many seeds in the garden. Too much competing with what God had given them. They had the authority. It just, it was diluted in its use to minister to this problem. 